In this video, we are going even deeper into AI. If you've watched our previous video on AI, I've shown you how the future of AI will ultimately be AI teams working together. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how to tie all of those pieces together on the back end using make.com, ClickUp, which is our project management software, and OpenAI to autonomously write copy, have compliance, review that copy, and come up with final version drafts in a matter of 30 to 45 seconds. In the past video, we talked about from a high level what the future of AI will look like, which is ultimately AI teams working together. And what we really went over was the prompts that I was inputting behind the scenes to ultimately get each agent, AI agent, to do their individual task. And in this video, I'm really going into the automations behind the scenes. How do you actually get them to all work together without you needing to manually trigger their work to be done? And so what you see on the screen in front of me is an example of what this automation will look like. I'm going to give you a high level view of what this workflow is and then show you each individual step and ultimately how they're set up and how you can set it up in your business. So to start off with our project management system, what we use is ClickUp. And in Inside of ClickUp, you can see this first initial stage, and it is triggered by a new task being created on a list. Now, to show you how this task is ultimately kicked off, it starts with a simple ClickUp form that our team will just need to implement or add in the details that we get from a client's onboarding. Now, because of private information, of course, I'm not going to show you uh, one of our direct clients, but I just took a random uh, business from online, a promotion they're running, and we can use them as the example for this video. So. For this example, what we can use is School Games, which is a very popular promotion happening, uh, at, which is one of Alex Ramosi's brands. And so, all I simply had to do was go into uh, one of their ads from the ads library, go to their landing page, uh, essentially, and use the information from their landing page uh, to fill out this form. And so, I've kind of done that already inside of this document here, uh, filling out the questions that are inside of the form. So, for example, if we go inside of ClickUp, all a team member would have to do is go inside and fill this out. So for example, I'm just gonna hit unassigned as a contact or a client name. I'm gonna give it a naming convention. So let's say for example, this is going to be school ADC 1.0 AI test. This will be attached to it and in the future, what you can ultimately end up doing, what we'll be using it as, is essentially a way for our AIs to track the performance of the copies it generates as it analyzes our ads. So inside of it, the next, who's the target audience for this ad? I've gone ahead and created this as a very general output. Just paste that in here. What is the primary pain point and the challenge of the target audience that we're facing? Again, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna paste it in. The more in-depth the answers that you give it, of course, the better the output. But for the example of this video, I'm just going to give kind of the brief overview or answer that we've pulled from the internet. Next key benefit is solution of the product. I went to their landing page and ultimately this is what their landing page says. So I'm gonna go ahead and provide it here. Then what is the unique selling proposition? This one I'm actually not going to list here because we don't have it and you can see it's not necessarily a required field. Uh, then what emotions would we like to invoke in this ad uh, for the target audience? We're gonna do competence, urgency, curiosity, and excitement. What is the desired action the audience should take after seeing this ad? We're gonna go ahead and paste in the CTA here. Then what is the specific objections? Again, we are not necessarily sure, so I didn't fill it in. What is the language tone? We're gonna go ahead and say excitement because essentially what these ads are promoting inside their ads library is the school games, which is this thing that you can participate in, compete, and ultimately win prizes and learn how to monetize uh, your community online. So this is where I pulled the answers from. You can essentially do this for any type of business, pull the quick answers, implement them into this form, and then all we have to do is hit submit. Now. Just to kind of give you a brief example, back to the workflow, essentially once this is triggered, once this form is submitted, it's going to create a task, which is then going to cause the next step to go pull information from uh, that task, the task ID. And it now, once we've pulled the task ID from that new task being created from the form being submitted, then we're able to actually go into our agent, uh, our ChatGPT assistant, and essentially give it instructions and a prompt. And I'm gonna show you how that's ultimately built. Essentially what this does is you create this. I've gone ahead and had it select the assistant and then given it the message that I want it to do. And then essentially what this message is triggering is it's giving the description, uh, which all those questions will be added to the description of the ClickUp task. And then it'll be based on that assistant following its template or its prompt that I've given it behind the scenes, which I'll show you here. 
The way you ultimately create an assistant is not the same as most people would use ChatGPT. In fact, an assistant is actually built in the open AI section of ChatGPT uh, and essentially is where you go into API calls and not just ChatGPT. So if you wanna actually find this, you have to have a premium version of ChatGPT and pay the $20 a month. But once you do that, you can just go to openai.com uh, and essentially, instead of going ChatGPT, you're gonna go API. And then over here, you're gonna go to Playground and this is where you can start to find you all of your assistants that you've built, right? Now, key component here is as you're building this, you're going to actually need tokens. And the way that you do this is you can go to your uh, dashboard, go to usage, and you wanna make sure that you're actually giving yourself enough usage because unlike ChatGPT, this is where it's actually going to require tokens, which means you have to have the right account. If you want to change or see how much tokens certain requests cost, you can go to the settings, go down to limits, and you can see here, it gives you a list of essentially how much tokens per minute each different model of ChatGPT uh, can use. And so you can request increases, but ultimately, uh, if you're using the standard uh, program, you just give it a budget, so for ours, all we have to do is about $100 a month, and that actually will process quite a few requests for you. Um, but here's just something to keep in mind because sometimes inside of the workflows, you'll actually need to insert a little 15 or 20 second delay to allow essentially another minute to pass for your tokens to refresh. So all that said, back into the assistance section, what you'll notice is inside of our assistance, I have several different assistants that we've built. For the purpose of this video, uh, we are using the advanced copywriter agent, and this is essentially the prompt that we've given it behind the scenes. So when you look at the workflow, while it's submitting the description, uh, the AI assistant is going to take the information about the business and pair that with the instructions I provided it on how I wanted to actually write copy. Right? So you can see the prompt here, it's a world-class copywriter. Uh, it's creating highly persuasive and compelling Facebook ads. Uh, the objective, I wanted to give me ad versions, understanding pain points. I wanted to understand the character limits that uh, exist for meta. You can always adjust these up or down based on what you're really looking for and perhaps what the brand is typically doing. So you can give it links and limits to how much text in copy it writes. I'm providing it with different copywriting techniques that it can use. Um, target market, I wanted to understand the target market, be performance oriented, have continuous improvement, and I've uploaded uh, swipe files of different examples and trainings I wanted to follow. So here you can kind of see in the knowledge base, this is what your AI will essentially use when it's trying to write different pieces of copy, meaning it'll learn uh, the trainings, our SOPs, our handbooks. Here what I've done is provided uh, the digital version of Breakthrough Advertising, one of my favorite direct response copywriting books. I've given it swipe files from Mel Martin, Ben Savanga, I've given it uh, different uh, books that I've written on advertising and writing copy, our internal copywriting handbook that we use that teaches our copywriters how to structure arguments, write persuasive copy, uh, as well as other swipe files of highly successful ads, right? So I've given all of this as a knowledge base for this copywriter to use when writing and fulfilling on the prompts I've given it. Then essentially I've turned on file search. This just essentially allows it to review these uh, uploads or uh, these attachments uh, when it's trying to fulfill on its prompts. And then for the purpose of this, what I'm saying is a text response, and then everything else is standard, right? I've kept code interpreter off just because that requires more tokens. And for this particular task, I don't need it to use uh, code or to interpret code. And then for the model, I'm using GPT-4. Right? So in this process, when we go back here, it is essentially taking the description from the task about the business and then writing ads using the prompts I've given it in the assistant. Right? Now the cool thing about the assistant is that unlike just a ChatGPT thread where it creates a new one every single time, when I use an assistant, every single time I trigger it, it is remembering and keeping that assistant siloed to that one job. And that is how it gets better and better and better. And this is ultimately where you get to assistants or AIs that will outperform humans because it continually reminds itself and reviews itself to improve. And it's only doing that one task. Unlike when you use a chat GPT and it has to answer everything and do a wide range of tasks all the time. In this way, it is siloed. It is my one agent that does its one job over and over again, and it gets really good. Then, after the AI has written it, it is going to populate ClickUp with a new uh, version of the first draft. From there, it is going to go back into an AI, 
And then this agent essentially passes the first draft of copy to our compliance and FTC compliance checker agent, which essentially then has its instructions of reviewing the copy and making sure that we are compliant both in FTC regulations as well as meta and Instagram community standards and advertising policies. Essentially what we've done uh, is we have uploaded PDFs of the different regulations and rules from the FTC from their website. You can download these PDFs as well as uh, all of Meta's ad compliance policies for both Instagram and Facebook. And so we've uploaded all of those files there for the agent to use as reference. And the prompt that it's using is essentially to review the materials, offer suggestions and feedback on areas that are unclear uh, or areas that have a risk, and then apply a severity rating on how non-compliant or compliant that this area that it's drawing attention to. Essentially, what we can do on the agency side is tell it what severity level we're willing to tolerate, and then the agent itself will give us the ranking on this is a one to 10 severity ranking of non-compliance. Meaning, if it's a 10, it is fully non-compliant, we absolutely have to change it. One being this is fully compliant, we're totally good. And so in this situation, we're able to get feedback on these issues and understand the severity ranking and we can decide from there on how much do we want to change or how severely do we want to correct this. So back to the workflow before I show you how it all comes together, back to the workflow, it, it provides the instructions, that feedback goes into ClickUp, then that feedback will be transitioned back to the advanced copywriter. Once that compliance feedback is delivered back to the copywriter, the copywriter will review the feedback given to it from the compliance AI and based on our tolerance of severity level, it'll begin to adjust the copy uh, on areas that would fall outside of our tolerance level. Meaning if our tolerance level at this time is a six and we find a compliance issue of a seven or higher, it will then adjust those areas while not adjusting anything below the six. Now that the compliance feedback has been adjusted, that copy then gets uploaded back into the ClickUp task for a final draft review. So with that said, as we've gone through the steps by step, uh, we're gonna go ahead and play this out so you can see ultimately how this works when it all comes together. I'm gonna go ahead and hit run. And now essentially what it's looking for, it's waiting for a task to be complete. So now that I've submit, have this form, I'm gonna go ahead and hit submit. And if we go to the list, we'll see a brand new task created here. And you'll notice all of the questions got added to the description. Now if we go back to make, we can see that it's seen a task that was created, it is then pulled that information from the task and is currently in the AI assistant copywriter writing initial drafts of copy. Now, as this is loading, it's really important for us to understand the implications of what I'm doing here. Essentially, what I'm doing is taking what perhaps would have taken us a day to two days to really do on a deep level, and we're doing it in a matter of minutes. This is just one of many different AI teams that we have set up at BAD, and this is very simple. But if you're watching this video and you have a business or you run marketing or you do research or ultimately anything that requires the internet, I want you to think about the implications of what's happening here and all of the different possibilities that you have. The key in the future of AI is just not thinking that one prompt is going to solve everything. The key is actually knowing that the right prompt with the right AI mixed with another AI with the right prompts can do magic together. And especially in other processes throughout our company where we have four, five, six, or seven different agents all doing their own tasks and working together, that's when we get a lot of magic happening. So as I've already talked, we can see this process is entirely done. Let's jump back into ClickUp and see what the end result is. So this was the original task that we had created. And you can notice again how the initial description was added in from the form. And we can see the first draft of copy already generated here in the comments section. We see one ad that has a pain point of lack of knowledge. The next ad goes after the complexity of the tools that exist on the market. The next ad goes after a benefit driven desire of financial independence. And then the next ad goes back to pain points of no support, no community with other softwares. Then fifth version is a benefit and it's fast success path, right? We see all the original versions here, but let's go ahead and look at the next task that it created. You can see here in subtask, we have the initial compliance feedback that was given to us by the compliance AI agent. And essentially it ranks the severity of those issues. So you can see here at the top line, this is a four out of 10, might not actually need to change or adjust, but it gives us the different uh, reviews and feedback on the ads that was provided. It gives the issue, then suggestions of how to do it. So we have the compliance report, 
Then ultimately, that was issued back to the copywriter to take those adjustments and create the final versions of ads that you see here. And as you saw, all of that was done in about 30 to 45 seconds. We have an ad that went from research to initial draft of copy to the compliance agent back to a final version of copy. As a pro tip, sometimes when you're implementing copy inside of your project management system or any other platform, sometimes you can get funky looking text like you see here on the right in the comment section where the first draft of copy was actually issued. But you'll notice in the final version of copy, it actually comes out nice and neat and formatted. The only easy, simple way to fix that is when you're creating these connections and you're sending that information back into your platform, like for us, for example, inside of ClickUp, when we're wanting to implement it back, all we have to do is underneath the section where we're saying content type, go from plain text to markdown, and you'll notice that the bolds and the formatting that ChatGPT or the AI originally had will appear inside of that project. If you do plain text, that's when you start to get those weird grammar things where you see the, the hashtags and the, the asterisks happening everywhere. So very simple thing, um, but all you've got to do is just change that one initial setting. There you have it from end to end, how this process works of using an AI agent team to work together. And for us at Bad Marketing, all it takes for us is about 30 seconds to a minute to fill out a quick form within our ClickUp, hit submit, and everything else is done from there.